Today's lesson is 6-6, six, six, simple interest and compound interest. Interest is also something that you will use um, in your lifetime. If you have a bank account, you're going to use interest. If you have to take a loan someday, you'll have to use interest. If you're just going to buy something and uh, use your credit card, you might have to deal with interest. So it'll be around you most of your life. So the first question I have, what is interest? <laughs> interest can be a good and a bad thing. You can have interest on your bank account, which means you make money, and you can have interest on a loan, which means you have to pay more back. Uh, so it can be a good thing and a bad thing. If you think of a bank account, though, interest is the easiest money you will ever make. If you put money into a bank account and you just let it sit there and let it grow and grow and grow because you're going to get interest on it, it's literally money that you did nothing to earn. You just put your money in the bank. So sometimes it can be the easiest money that you ever make. Other times, not so much. You might have to pay more back. Let's say you take a loan up for a house. Maybe your house costs $180,000 and you have a high interest rate. You're going to pay back more than $180,000 to the bank because they want your, the money that they loaned you plus some for um, letting you use their money. So it can be a good and a bad thing. So interest, I have a few definitions here. Interest, simple interest, is the amount paid or earned for the use of money amount paid or earned for the use of money. And then principal. Um, principal is the amount of money you put into your bank account initially or the amount of money that you initially borrow for something. So it's that first amount that you that you either put into your account or the first amount that you that you're borrowing. Now there's an easy um, equation for simple interest. And it's I equals PRT. And it can also be written like this. I equals P times R times T. These number or letters that are together, meaning you're going to multiply those things. So each of those letters means something. I means interest. The P means principal. And then the next two things uh, are things that you need to know, but maybe something you have to do within them. Like, for example, the rate is the percent. And every time you have percent, you have to change to decimal format. So there's a few other things you might have to do with the R and the T. Okay, so percentage, you have to change to decimal format. And then time also has to be in years. Sometimes they're going to give it to you in months, and you have to figure out what part of the year that is. So, for example, let's say they say something is six months. Well, you would have to use half or 0.5 because any time that you're going to deal with the T, it has to be in years. Um, if you would have, let's say, um, uh, three, 12, so if you have 12 months, you'd ha you could deal with that as three over 12 or one fourth, or you could use 0.25. If they said something like, if they said 18 months, well, we know 18 months is a year and a half. So these are the numbers that you would need to use in that time slot. You cannot use months. So I equals P times R times T. All right, so how are we going to use this? This example says Arnold puts $580 into a savings account. The account pays 3% simple interest. How much interest will we have in five years? The first thing I would do is I would write out your equation. And I'd start filling in what I know. Let's see, I know 580 would be my principal because that's what he initially put into his account. Okay, my rate is 3%, and I have to change that to a decimal. So two spaces, I have to move over my decimal. This would be 0 0.03. And then my time is in years, so I don't have to worry about changing anything like that. So I'm looking for my interest. So if I multiply all these things together, 580 times 0 0.03 times 5, I get $87. That means that he would put his money into his account, $580, and didn't touch it, didn't put anything else in. He uh, had 3% simple interest, which was very, 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 very high. And he did this for five years. He let his money sit for five years. He would make $87 by just letting his money sit there. Just $87. That's not what he would have at the end, though. So if he wanted to know how much he was going to have at the end of his five years, he would take his 87 plus 580, what he initially put in, and that's how much he would have total at the end of his five years. Okay. This says Debbie has 180 in her Jaybird Savings Bank. If they pay 1.5% interest for every six months, how much will she earn? So again, I would start with I equals PRT. Okay. And I fill in what I know. My principal is 180. My rate is 1.5%, so I'll move my decimal two spaces, 0 0.01. 
on five. And then it says six months this time. No, it's in months. And I have to change that to year. So six months would be half a year. I'm going to use 0.5. So I have, I'm going to change this to multiplication sign so you can see it a little easier. There we go. So I have 180 times 0 0.015 times 0 0.5. And she'd make a dollar and 35 cents in her Jaybird savings bank for every six months she'd have it in there. And that's not even if she would put more in. The more she put in, the more interest she would earn. That's how it works. So the more money you put into your account, the more interest you would earn. If you take it out, you'll earn less interest. Here's another example. This is a loan example. Um, this is actually a real-life example that I had a while back. It said, I have a student loan for $1,433.27. The interest rate is 6.8%. How much interest am I going to pay in one month? So I have a loan, and I borrowed it, and it was $1,433.27. My interest rate was 6.8%. I wonder how much interest I'm going to have to pay back in just one month. So I'm going to, again... I equals P times R times T, and I'm going to start putting some things in. So my principal would be this. Oops, 27. My rate would be 0 0.068. I have to move my decimal in two spaces. And then it says in one month. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it times 112, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this times this, and then I'm going to multiply it times 1. So I'm going to do... 1,433.27 times 0 0.068 times 1. 1,433.27 times, oops. So to do that, I get $97 and about 46 cents. Now, this is pretty much what I would do in a year because I took it times 1. Now, I'm going to divide this by 12, which would, would I be doing here? I'm going to divide by 12. And I would pay about $8.12 um, every time that I would have to make a payment. The good news is, the more that I pay off, the less interest I'll have to pay. All right, so here's another example, and I want you to write this one in your notebook. It says, how to find an interest rate. So instead of finding the interest, we're going to work to find the rate. Um, so it says, Betty put $2,400 into the bank for five years. She made $9.26 in interest each month. Find the annual rate, which means yearly rate of the interest. So I'm going to start with I equals PRT. Okay, I know that I'm looking for the rate, so I know my R is going to be open. My time was five. My principal, I initially put in $2,400. Okay, but that $9.20 is not my interest. That's finding per month, so I need to know annually what I, ma what I made in interest. So to do that, I would take 920 times 12, and I get $110. Oh, I'm sorry, for five years. So actually, I need to know what it is for five years. Okay, so 920 times 12. Now, this is what she would pay in one year, 11040 And then I'm going to multiply that by five because I need to know all together in those five years of how much interest that she's going to make. So then I would take this number times five. Oops. And then I would get $552. So she makes $552 in all five years of just letting her money sit in that bank account, which is pretty awesome. Now the question is, how do I find what that rate is? Okay, pretty simple. First thing we're going to do... We're going to multiply what we know. Okay, so 2,400 times 5, I know that's $12,000, or 12,000, times my open space, so it should be my rate, 552. Now I have to solve for what my R would be. Um, and think back to how we did that before when we did percents in uh, our equation. So I know that this has to be by itself on one side, so this is what's going to come over here and get divided. So I'm going to do 552 divided by 12,000, and I get this number. Now, I'm looking for the percent, so that means I have to move my decimal two spaces. So the interest rate is about 4.6%. We can do another example like this in class if you want to see another example like this. 
All right, the last thing I have to show you is compound interest. Okay, so simple interest is something that you did last year. This is the new part. You have not done compound interest. So compound interest is paid on the initial principal and interest earned in the past. This is how credit cards work, and this is how people get in trouble with credit cards. They can't pay their credit card off, so they get interest piled on top of it. And then the next month, they still can't pay it. So it's continue accumulating interest on top of that initial balance over and over and over again. Um, in other words, the interest keeps piling on top of each other. Like I said, this is how people get in credit card debt. It's because they can't pay off their credit card, and the interest just keeps piling on. Interest can be up to 30% on a credit card, and that's a lot. So let me show you how to find this. It says find the compound interest on an account where $600 is invested at an interest rate of 8% compounded annually for two years. The easiest thing to do for compound interest is to make a table. Make a chart. Because it's for two years, so we're gonna. this is going to be year one. Year number one, and this is going to be year number two. All right, now let me show you how this works. The first thing we're going to start with, we're going to just worry about year one, and we're going to do I equals P times R times T. So we're going to put in everything we know. The only different thing is we're going to do, instead of the time, we're going to use one because we're only figuring out one year at a time. So your interest, we don't know. We know the principal is 600. We know the rate is 8%, so 0 0.08, okay? And we're going to use 1 for the time for the compound in interest because we're going to do each year individually. So for the first year, we're going to take 600 times 0 0.08 times 1, and that gives me $48, okay? That means that just one year, $48 is what came upon that what is what, what this person earned in interest. So the next thing we're going to do for the at the end of year one, we want to know total what this person has at the end of year one. So the total is 648. Their initial plus their interest is going to give you the total. Now when we start year two, we're going to use I equals P times R times T. And this number is what's going to be put into the principal because that's what you have in that account at the end of the first year. So now you're going to start again and you're going to do your principal is going to be 648 times your rate was going to stay the same times one because we're still only doing one year at a time. So 648 times 0.08 times 1 is 51.84. Now, the total answer is going to be what you have in your account at the end of year 2. So then you would take your what you made in interest plus what you had at the beginning of the year, and you're going to add those two together to figure out how much you would start year 3 with. 699.84. And that's how you find compounded interest. Now, you can have compounded interest for years. It could be up to three or five years. But let's do another one. It says, I have a credit card balance of $300. It has an interest rate of 30%. Find the interest rate if it is compounded annually for two years. And I'm going to add that you probably don't make a payment. So we're going to start. Here's going to be year one. Here's going to be year two. Okay, we're going to start I equals P times R times T. And again, in compound interest, we're going to use one for the time because we're using one year at a time. We're finding one year. So let's see, credit card balance is 300 times your 30%, so 0 0.3 times your 1. 300 times 0 0.3 times 1, which would be $90. That means that if you let your bank, if you let your credit card sit there and you have $300 on it, you earn $90 in interest because you didn't make a payment on it. So now, total at the end of your year one, you're going to owe $390. So then this would be used for your principal for next time. This is your principal. Your rate is still 30% times your 1 for your year, so 390 times 0.3 times 1 would be $117. Now this is what you have an interest for that year 2 plus your initial balance that you were still supposed to pay off, and then you would use 507 to start your next balance if you had to go to year 3. And you just continue this pattern over and over and over again. Okay, that's all I have for you today. We'll probably practice the compounded interest together uh, the next time I see you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.